Maya, oh Maya, what a great show. On Sunday, October 9th, Maya Wynn appeared in a little downtown apartment in Birmingham, Alabama. And since that's close enough for me to go see a show, I contacted my son who lives in the area. I said, let's go see this artist that you've never heard of. And I think we're going to have a good time. So he agreed. So him and I went to downtown Birmingham that evening to see Maya Wynn. I didn't know what to expect. You know, this is an All About Rush channel, right? This is the All About Rush channel on YouTube, and the only reason I know about Maya Wynn is because of her association with Alex Lifeson and the band Envy of None. And on this channel, I've re I reviewed both their initial single, Liar, and the album when it came out, which both videos, there'll be a link of in the cards or in the description or in, or in the end cards, somewhere in this video. Uh, you'll be able to, if after you watch this video, check out what I thought of the band's music that she is the lead singer of. But anyway, this concert um, or a little get together was not about Rush and it was not about Envy of None. It was about Maya Wynn. I love her voice from the record, Envy of None. So I wanted to see what it was all about in a more intimate setting. This tour that she's doing in the US as of this recording, different small little venues across uh, across the country, sometimes uh, in outside settings, sometimes in someone's apartment or backyard. Uh, in this case, it was a, a downtown apartment, very well furnished, pretty large, a lot of memorabilia inside. And Bob, the host, did an excellent job of catering to all of the guests. It wasn't a, a large venue, you know, it was an, it's an apartment but quite large. Uh, there was about 40 something of us, about 42 people in total there. And if any Rush fan who is asking, you know, what do we need, really need to know uh, about Maya Wynn on this channel, which is all about Rush? Yes, because not only does she have a connection with the band now, she's part of the Rush family <laughs> because she uh, has a, pro a whole project with Alex Lyson. But when you go to these uh, little get-togethers, you'll meet a lot of Rush fans. <laughs> they, they're going to this show. Uh, I made acquaintances with several people that, you know, some have seen some of the videos on this channel. Others uh, didn't know this existed, so now uh, they'll be checking this out. But there was, there's a lot to talk about when you meet a Rush fan for the first time. You start talking about stuff, where you're from, where you met Rush, you know, when you saw Rush the first time. I met a couple of them that had meet and greets with Alex and Getty which was pretty interesting as well. So going to see Maya, you will see Rush fans there. So if that's what you want to do is meet, you know, new Rush fans, not new Rush fans, but new to you Rush fans, these little Maya Wynn get togethers are a good place to do that. As far as Maya Wynn herself, uh, I, th I think she was spectacular. Now, I know from hearing the record and seeing a few of her videos, I love her voice. Her voice is mesmerizing. It's, you know, is very sweet and kind of laid back and breathy, uh, but you feel a sense of of calm, of tranquility. That's what her voice conveys. It's kind of like when she's singing, it's more like you're walking through a meadow on a summer day, or it's raining outside and you're just inside hearing the rain pitter, pitter pattering on the window. It's just calmness. I think her genre of music mostly resembles folk music and to tell you the truth, that's a genre, and I told her this personally after the show, which I'll talk about that more later, but as far as this aspect goes, not my favorite genre of music. And I think the only reason that I'm into it a little bit now is obviously because I mentioned of her association with Alex Lifeson, that's how I discovered Envy of Rush, and I think that's a good thing, you know. I like that I got to see her live and kind of expose myself to more music that maybe I wouldn't have, you know, if Alex Lyson was not involved in her career somehow. So that's a good thing. You know, some, some of us Rush fans are trying to fill in the void with other music now that there's no more, no more new Rush music, but I think it's good to branch out. It's kind of Rush did when they, they in integrated reggae and even rap in, in their songs, they expanded too. So now that they're not around to making music, you know, this is something that I, I enjoy. And I think Maya, Maya Wynn is now exposing me to music that I may not have given a chance before. But like I said, she's a very, throughout the show, she showed that she's a very uh, multi-talented. 
Uh, she plays a bunch of different instruments. I think she said she played like 17 different instruments, several of the different stringed instruments, ukuleles, guitars, obviously electric and acoustic, and some others that I don't remember the name of, but there'll be some pictures throughout this video that I'll display. You'll see some of the instruments that she plays. One of the things that I find very interesting is that she's a multi-instrumentalist. And when I say multi-instrumentalist, not that she plays different instruments, but that she plays them at the same time. And kind of reminds me of Rush, especially Getty Lee. Well, all of them. You know, you had Neil Peart with the acoustic and electronics going on at the same time. You had Alex with the different guitars and the pedals and the, the bass pedals also, uh, keyboard pedals and whatnot. And obviously Getty Lee singing bass guitar, pedals, keyboards. And Maya is cut from that same mold. She has, she's just playing her guitar or whatever stringed instrument it is and she's singing. And she has this uh, bass drum and snare at her feet. And interestingly enough, she has never lost her balance. Uh, one thing that we had during the show, which I thought was a lot of fun, there was a lot of talk between the songs. There was an inter interchange of questions. We could ask her anything we wanted. And she was gracious enough to answer all of our questions. And uh, I piped up and asked her how has she ever lost her balance because she's... You know, she's playing the guitar and singing and she's playing bass drum and snare snare drum with her feet. And she doesn't lose time and she doesn't go sing off key. She's pretty in the zone, not too distracted. At least that's how she makes it look. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty hard to do all that, but uh, she makes it look easy. I mean, she's done it for a while. That's kind of like her, you know, her shtick. <laughs> but it's a good one. I mean, really to do all of those things at the same time. To do one of those things at any acceptable level is an accomplishment in and of itself. But to do that all at the same time, that is a, that's a high level artist right there. She played a combination of original songs and songs that she covers. One interesting song that she covered was um, a Black Sabbath song and she played it on the banjo which I'm not even going to say which one it is. If you want to find out, just go to the show <laughs> and see it. It's um, pretty interesting how she pulled that off. And another thing that she did as well, besides, you know, with all the instruments that she plays, she pulled out the uh, an Epiphone electric guitar, which is Alex Lifeson's signature guitar. And it's literally a guitar that Alex handed to her, that gave to her. He's sported that guitar on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. I believe that same exact guitar she gave, she, uh, he gave to her, uh, which was pretty cool. She played it uh, on a few of the songs and uh, I actually got to hold the guitar at the end of the show. She let me hold it and take a few pictures with it, which I thought was very super cool. Uh, had the, the E chord on it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, it's one of the few chords I know. And she even had a standing ovation for one of the songs that she did because it was so lovely, the way she played it, the way she sang it. And I do have to mention a little more about her singing. Got to be one of my favorite voices in music right now. She she has a lot of range, but she always keeps that, that soothing character in her voice. Um, whenever she's singing high notes or just singing the chorus, the uh, verses of the song, such a sweet voice and very calming and soothing and definitely fits the genre of what she's playing. Right. And it's not, you know, a screaming rock voice, but it doesn't have to be because that's not what this is about. I think the most rock she's been is when she played with Envy of None. And she even mentioned herself that, you know, this, that's the rock side of her, which she typically doesn't play that kind of music. She's and she didn't expect to play this kind of music. She is more uh, folksy type music. And the fact that she's not only playing covers, but she's also, you know, writing her own songs. You know, she has a really pretty good repertoire of music and she's writing songs all the time. In fact, even the day of the show, she was writing new material a few minutes, even right before the show, because she thought of something, she had to write it down. And her assistants were like, you we got to do your makeup. I mean, come on, let's get going. But she's into her writing. So she's very focused as far as writing music goes. And it shows in her performance. I mean, she really has her stuff down. And for her to do a tour, a U.S. tour, even in, in these small venues, it's worth seeing. It, she looks like she's a world-class musician because you know, she's doing it all. She's doing it all by herself. And, you know, not many, you don't see that very often. Um, there's a lot of electronica going on. There's a lot of, let's just say, the live music scene is pretty is not what it used to be. And I think if you like live music, this is something that'll satisfy you, you know, because not only is it live, but it's intimate. At least, in, you know, 
Maybe she'll blow up in a way that, you know, she'll be playing arenas. Who knows? Now is the chance to see her really up close, even, you know, in an apartment setting, in a loft, in a backyard, uh, because that's, you know, what her touring looks like right now. And she's very, very friendly, very sweet and humble. And she's very interested in each person that's there to see her. We got to take pictures with her after the show, uh, my son and I. And like I said, I got to hold one of Alex's guitars, oh, well, her guitar that Alex gave her, which was, a, which was a treat. So this Rush fan is satisfied very much with this performance and not because I'm a Rush fan. I say that this Rush fan because this is the All About Rush channel and you know, now, now Maya Wynn is part of the Rush family which is a cool thing and I hope to see a lot more of her to see her you know where her career takes her pretty interested now and whenever she's touring and she's around I'm gonna make the effort to see her again because that's how good the show was do I have anything ne is there any cons any negatives about the show um no <laughs> I, I really can't think of any did she maybe lose time a little bit on one or two of her songs for a second perhaps she never sang off key and I pay attention to those things. She was spot on the whole time. And that's something that's hard to do, like I said, when she's doing all that stuff at the, at the same time. Again, it's like she's cut from the same cloth as the guys in Rush, as far as the multi-instrumentalist type thing, type uh, gig. She pulls that off v extremely well. And her songs don't sound like they're one long folk song. You know, each song is different from the other. And, you know, I think because she throws in some covers of songs, I think it kind of breaks up, you know, the moods of the songs. You know, there's songs that she plays and sings that are happier than others. There are others that are a little more melancholy. Uh, some that have like um, even a darker theme to them and others that have kind of a lighter theme as well. And the fact that there's banter between her and the audience in between songs just makes for an enjoyable evening with Maya Wynn. So, if you ask me if you should go see the show, I would say definitely yes. You'll have a very pleasant time. Your ears will not be blown out, and you'll it'll be a soothing and, and satisfying experience because of the, how sweet she is when she's singing and when she's talking to you, and you'll come out of there wanting more. So that's my review of the show, Maya Wynn. Go to her website at mayawin.com, I think it is. You know, the link to her website is going to be in the description. If you want to see if she's on tour and if she's going to be near your, near your area, I would say check her out. You're going to have a very good time. Lovely music, soothing, calming music, and an absolutely lovely, sweet voice. That's Maya Wynn. This is Omar Alvarado of All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.